You have to be that crazy ex-girlfriend. No! Go away! Stalking Casper, making sure that they're receiving all of your material. What's up you guys, it's Adana. I am back with another video for you guys. So, um, I know that some of you have already gotten into the Casper swing. Casper has been opening since April, but some of you are gearing up for the new Casper to open up for this upcoming 20, what are we gonna be in, 2018, 2019 cycle? And that will be opening up in April, this coming April, April 2018. What are we in? Oh my gosh, we're in 2017. So yeah, April 2018. So I decided that I would make a video about Casper for you guys. I know I like, I stalked Casper. I called Casper all the time just to make sure that I was doing everything correctly, um, make sure that my stuff was in there in on time. And that's really like the same thing you have to do. You have to be that crazy ex-girlfriend. Open the door! No! Go away! Open the door! stalking Casper, making sure that they're receiving all of your material because you do not want to verify your Casper application if you still have things outstanding. Why? Because it won't make it into your application. No one will be able to see it. So they're not going to be able to see what a beautiful, wonderful person you are. How many ex extremely amazing volunteer hours that you have. You may have still had, I don't know, 400 pending, and then they only see the 30 that you reported and got verified by, by CASPA. So that's what this video is gonna be about. I'm gonna take you guys on over to the computer. We're gonna create like a fake um, CASPA account. Uh, it is time consuming, so you do need to have the time <laughs> available and ready to do it because um, it could be a little bit tedious, especially when you have to enter in all of your coursework. So that is something that you'll definitely have to take some time to do, um, enter in all of your coursework. You're not going to be able to see your science GPA while you're doing that. Um, you only see your science GPA as calculated by CASPA once your application has been verified. So it's important for you to already know what your CASPA GPA is. Um, and I'll send you, take you to a website that I use quite often when I was applying to PA school and then I still use now um, just to calculate my GPA. So I, so I know that like exactly where I'm at or how different grades will affect my GPA. So let's do it. Let's go right now. Okay, y'all, so here we are. We are at Casper's website. Um, I just literally Googled this, and um, I Googled Casper, and Casper came up. So I made this fake sign-in, and I'm going to sign in. You would need to create an account, but I already did so. Um, up here, you can see all of your profile information, so all of your personal information, um, and if you have frequently asked questions or if you have a question about the application that you don't necessarily know about, you can go right up here to the top upper right hand corner um, and check out your profile and go to your instructions. So when it has this little bell here, that means there's a notification. So my notification is, hey, um, welcome to Castbook because I just recently um, created this. So that is that my notification button is now off and so now i can go to my application so here in the application you'll have kind of the different notifications right here on the left screen as well and then you can go right here to personal information this is where you enter all of your biographical information, contact information, citizenship, everything. Um, so this is pretty self-explanatory, you guys. Um, I know that there is something more specific. Um, let me see if I can find it for you. I don't think I see it. But there is a portion in here where it t asks you questions specifically about um, did you, your family re receive Medicaid or, and different things like that if you were in like an environmentally um, underserved area basically is what it's trying to figure out. But that will all be in this section. To navigate back to the dashboard, you just go to my application and then the dashboard pops up. Um, I already added some programs here because I stated that I was trying to apply for schools um, for a start date of next year fall so it has all of the schools that don't 
that still are accepting applications. So you're going to see a lot of March dates, March 1st, and then January dates. Um, January 15th is usually that date that you would need to get your CASPA application in by. So that CASPA application needs to be verified and um, sent off by that date. Um, with me completing the application at this moment, which is um, 1224, uh, I don't believe that it would be verified. It, CASPA says that it takes anywhere from four to six weeks to get your application verified. So even if I were to have everything done four weeks, um, I'm not really sure would hit that fifth, um, January 15 mark. But for the March 1st mark, it would. So this is where you go to add it. Um, I can literally just add Clarkson University College of St. Mary. Um, and now you'll see where I want to submit my application, it tells me all of my application fees. The first application is always $177, I believe it is. Let me just go ahead and delete some things. And it shows you as it continues to drop from the $51. Um, because each subsequent application after the first is $51. So I can sort it by the deadline or alphabetically. Um, it's up to you to choose how you want to sort your applications out. Um, furthermore, depending on where you're at within your application for each school, how much information you still may need, um, the line will be longer or shorter, this line of completion. So Methodist University, the line is a little bit longer than Turo College because, hey, um, I don't necessarily have any additional things that I need um, to add for Methodist University. And you can see that here. So I'm going to go down to the program materials. That's where you see all the schools and you see how Methodist University has a check. That means that I'm pretty much done with that. Once you've completed each school, you'll get a check. And the only reason I'm done with this is because it does not have an extra anything extra for me to do. Um, unlike uh, Johnson and Wales, where it has the prerequisite coursework that I have to add. I can only add this if I add in my transcript. And you guys, I'm not making up some fake transcript to add stuff in because the transcript is absolutely a killer. Um, it's so, so tedious. Um, here it is. You can I made some fake high schools and colleges that was attended um, and here's the transcript screen so you can add in your transcript I made up a transcript um, I made up a university that I went to uh, but I did not necessarily want to add the transcript in because I would have had to do that piece by piece um, but we can just go in to see how you would review the transcript so here is Alabama State, that's where I said I went. Did I repeat any classes? No. No. Okay, so we're just going through this the transcript entry was done for that, right? I made up um, anatomy and physiology to put that on there. So my transcript review is finished. Um, I had the colleges that I attended here. You can download the transcript request form. Once you download this form, this is what you would send to or bring to your school. It has the instructions right here on every single thing that the registrar needs to do. And you need to make sure that CASPA has received all of your material before you submit it. So the, the registrar has to do this. I'm going to click out of that. Let me show you guys where you can go to make sure that they have received everything. It's up here. Check status. You have transcripts. Zero out of one have arrived. So unless you see one out of one or two out of two, do not submit this application because your GPA will not be calculated. I repeat, it will not be calculated by CASPA. Um, so therefore, for some programs, you might not be meeting the actual GPA requirement. 
Okay, so let's go down to the supporting information. Um, this is where you would get your evaluations, um, your send your evaluation request. So I made up a fake evaluation request sent to Miss Joan Johnson. Um, when I went in and I looked at how the evaluations were set up, they're literally, um, they ask you how do they know, how does the evaluator know you? Um, was it in a personal capacity or like in what capacity do they know you? How long have they known you? And then they have a bunch of like little, you know, dis disagree, agree, agree. Can I recommend this applicant? Um, little bubbles that they have to fill in. And then there's a portion for them to actually upload um, the Re, the letter of recommendation. So I know some of you has, have asked me, um, can I write the letter of recommendation and then just have my evaluator sign it? Yes, you can. Um, obviously, they will have to upload it to um, the CAS system so that CASPA can re receive it, but that is obviously an option. So you can add in your experiences, any achievements that you have, your licenses, so um, your uh, CNA, MA, EMT, EMS license. This is where, this is the big daddy. Your personal statement, you are going to um, copy and paste it. Only 5,000 characters. Um, that's why I always say keep it about one page, single spaced. Um, and upload it right in here and make sure that it's bomb because I feel like this is what helps you get into PA school. You're going to have to complete this whole release form to um, for CASPA and accept everything and then you can also put in memberships if you have any memberships. Um, I'm going to go back to the dashboard right here and um, so I have my academic history completed so that also shows you where you're at with respect to um, the different sections that you're in. Um, here so <laughs> excuse me you guys all right so we have that I'm going to go back, I'm going to X out because you can always X out of that particular dashboard. Um, I've already showed you the program materials section and let me just go into another one to show you exactly because some of them have these extra questions, right? So you can always add, um, some of them require like maybe a CV or any healthcare hours, shadowing hours. That's what Turo requires. It will require you to put in your prerequisites. So since I verify my transcript, I can assign a course now for my anatomy and physiology. This is the one I'm going to choose. I'm going to save and exit. So now when you go down, there it is. So I have that checked off. And this is what you'll have to do for each course in the prerequisite section. And then um, I can go over here to the questions because it asks, like, have you previously applied to this program? No. So you, there are certain questions that you will have to answer. Behavioral health elective track. Um, let's just say sure. And then we'll save that and close it. So that question section is finished. This is partly done, but not fully. So that's why I don't have it checked off. It's not checked off here um, as it is with Methodist University. Um, so just be mindful of that. Make sure that all of your schools are checked off so you know that you have completed everything required for each school. Um, let's go back to the dashboard. I gone into any supporting information. So we already saw all of this, your evaluations. I explained that to you guys. Um, if you have any um, like questions or anything like that, you can go there. They'll respond to you. They do respond to you fairly quickly. So um, I do suggest either emailing them or you can call them. There is a number that you can call, um, but you will need your CASPA ID. So make sure that you have that handy wherever um, even if you're using it through email. All right, um, so that's pretty much it. I have everything here. When I'm ready to submit, I would submit the application. I can look here to see how much um, progress I have in the actual programs. Um, I do want to just touch on this academic history one more time. So with respect to when you're talking about the colleges and you're adding in your transcripts and all of that stuff. So let's say I had to add another college. Um, let's go with Alabama. 
um, A&M, right? Let's go with Alabama A&M. Um, I'm going to say no, I didn't receive a degree from them. I uh, will go with this, this and let's just say I attended there in the spring of this past year of 2015 um, and we'll say that I ended in May right 2015 where are you at and say this college so here we have it I have a new college added I can download the transcript form request form again for Alabama A&M when you are adding coursework um, when you have to now go in and add coursework for the different college. So I'd have to do it for Alabama A&M. You go to transcript entry, I have to start that. So you have the option of paying $65 for them to enter every bit of coursework that you have, or you can do it by yourself. It will do that for you. Since I've already said I'm going to do it by myself, I would literally have to add in everything every semester piece by piece by myself which can get really really tedious if you have gone to you know high school and you took um, AP classes and you went to your undergrad and then you went to a post back and then you also went to a master's degree um, just being able to having to put in all of that information is tedious so um, for one to three transcripts they will do that for you for $65. Um, I don't remember the price for um, anything above three, but the price increases for more than three transcripts. So that is something that you might want to actually look at and look into if you're interested in um, not having to do the transcript coursework and adding it piece by piece for yourself. Um, but that will be in the this section right here, the supporting information in academic history, um, more so the academic history is where you would put that information in. All right, but that is it, you guys. I mean, this is it's pretty simple, honestly, navigating through CASPA. They make it pretty simple in terms of how to get from point to point. Um, the only thing is that it does take time to put in all of this information, so make sure that you do have time to do so um, with respect to giving yourself enough time, like a day or two, to get all of your information in, especially if you're doing the transcript by yourself. All right, you guys, so that was it. Um, hopefully this video made it a little bit less daunting for you guys, a little bit easier to understand what you need to do with respect to CASPA, how CASPA even looks. I suggest that you guys go and familiarize yourself with CASPA, um, especially if you're planning on applying anytime soon. Make sure you have the time ready, set aside and available to actually do CASPA. And um, I hope that this was very helpful and very beneficial to you. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any further questions, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you have anything specific for CASPA, um, I will leave the link to the CASPA website in this video and in the description box so that you can go there and you can ask them the questions that you have directly or just browse through their frequently asked questions. All right, um, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe and um, join me on Instagram at Adana the PA. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.